Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Last spring, President Trump drove official Washington into hyperventilation by publicly claiming the Obama administration had wiretapped members of his campaign staff in his office at Trump Tower prior to the last election. Now, not everything the president says on Twitter is factually accurate, but to anyone who's been in Washington for a while, that claim didn't seem crazy or even really that unlikely. That sort of thing does happen here and everybody knows it. So imagine how confusing it was to see a parade of prominent Washington figures leap forward to denounce Trump's claim as not just untrue, but insane. Speaker of the House Paul Ryan confidently told reporters that, quote, we have not seen any evidence of wiretapping at Trump Tower or on anyone within Trump Tower. Richard Burr and Mark Warner, those are the two top senators on the Senate Intel Committee, and they would know they dismissed the claim as well. The Justice Department denied surveilling Trump staff, as did then-FBI Director Jim Comey, while giving sworn testimony before Congress. So suspicions confirmed the media laughed derisively. Wiretapping? Come on! That's tinfoil hat stuff. It's nuts! Now, in another time, with more trustworthy institutions, that would have been the end of the story. But we live in a country with deeply corrupt institutions, and so it turns out all those patronizing assurances that nobody's spying on political campaigns were false, and probably intentionally so. According to a new report from CNN, Paul Manafort, who for a time last year was Trump's campaign chairman, was wiretapped by the federal government both before and after the election. Now, Manafort, it ought to be noted, had an apartment inside Trump Tower during that time. So it's virtually certain that surveillance of him would have included other members of the Trump campaign staff, maybe even Trump himself. In other words, it looks like Trump's tweet may have been right. So why did three top members of Congress from both parties and the country's top law enforcement officer all assure us the surveillance didn't happen, that there wasn't a shred of evidence to suggest it had happened? Were they lying? Or do they simply not know? Neither answer is comforting. Either the intelligence agency has gone rogue, pursuing its own goals without meaningful oversight from elected officials, or our officials are colluding with one another to lie to the public, apparently for political reasons. Either way, something ominous is happening in Washington. Last year's election terrified the permanent class here, mostly because it was a genuine populist uprising that they couldn't control despite all efforts. Since the election, they've done everything in their power to reverse the results or simply pretend it never happened. In an ironic twist, they become exactly what they claim to oppose. They collude behind closed doors to push a narrative of secret collusion. They compare the president to Vladimir Putin and then use secret surveillance and politically motivated leaks to menace their political enemies. And then, for good measure, they lie about it. In the name of protecting democracy, they're doing everything they can to subvert the results of a democratic vote. Irony of ironies. No Russian hacking has ever threatened this country more than that. 